Welcome to Hurstbourne Christian Church and our Monday Thursday service this Holy Week. Uh, coming to you a little differently than what uh, we had planned, but everything is different now. Uh, we appreciate you coming and watching and listening and worshiping with us in these services that we're offering to you. We'd be interested in hearing from you uh, about uh, what you think about them, and let us know that you're there. Uh, let's begin this evening service with Susan uh, playing a piece for us. Listen now to our scripture for this evening, coming from the Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his inner robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he'd washed their feet and put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, you, call me, you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I set before you an example that you should do as I have done to you. This is the word of God for the people. You know, in the age of COVID-19, we've done a lot of hand washing, have we not? We've even got tutorials online of how to wash your hands properly. 
And the doctors tell us you first of all have got to rinse all the way, get them nice and wet, and then the soap, and then you wash between the fingers one way, between the fingers the other way, between the fingers this way, between the fingers the other way. Then you have to get the fingernails by grinding your hands together just like this, and you don't want to forget the thumbs. You've got to get the thumbs too. So tutorials for hand washing. It's amazing, isn't it? Did you think ever you'd see on TV and everywhere else instructions on how to wash your hands properly? But that's what we're doing now because of this virus. How many times have you used Perel this week? I had a friend that told me that uh, he felt like he washed his hands and sanitized so much that he can actually touch somebody and heal them right now. We all may be feeling that way. Maybe wearing our hands out. Another friend, kind of a rascal, said he, he'd washed his hands so many times that the, the toy tiger entry stamp had come on the back of his hand. He'd found it again. For those of you who know where the toy tiger was, I will talk later. My dad, when I first started doing public speaking in high school, had taken a public speaking course, and he said, in order to make your point, you've got to overcome their whole hum. You have to make a point that will be remembered. That's what we tried to do this morning. And it was something of that nature that Jesus was doing on the night of the Last Supper, as it was recorded for us by the evangelist John. In some ways, it comes as a surprise to us as much as it did to those early disciples. We may even find ourselves as scandalized by it as was Peter. We may even find that, of course, we're expecting what we get in the other Gospels, but the tradition of Jesus taking bread and wine and sharing with them and the others in remembrance of him. But this part is not in the other Gospels. John doesn't even tell us about that event at all. Rather, he tells us about something that happened at the meal not reported by the other three evangelists. He tells us this remarkable story of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. So why did Jesus do it? I suppose he wanted to show them and tell them something about himself and something about themselves. It's not clear precisely when this event occurred in relation to the passing of the bread and wine because John says Jesus did it during supper. In any event, the foot washing is another way for Jesus to show the disciples what he meant, what it meant to give his body and his blood. It was an act of service which no one else could or would do. And Jesus and the disciples that day had walked a long way from Bethany in their sandaled feet, and their feet were dirty and dusty. The basin and towel were there to be used by the servant appointed for that purpose, but there was no servant. And it was, it was evident if feet were to be washed, one of them were going to have to do it. Now, that's a lot of, to expect from a bunch of guys who only a few days previously have been quarreling about who would have the chief seats in the kingdom. And in their pride, they preferred that, that all, including their master, should eat unwashed rather than one of them stoop to do the job. In their pride, they failed not only to minister to one another, they failed to minister to Jesus himself. I wonder if Jesus was sorrowfully exasperated with them, the way parents get with their children when they stubbornly insist on their own way. The way parents are no doubt getting frustrated with their kids having to homeschool them this week, much to their, dis their dismay. Had he talked and talked for three years, had Jesus talked and talked for three years for nothing? What more could he say? How could he express the message of the love of God any more vividly than what he did? What good would be more words if they did not understand or apply what he'd been saying up to that time? So Jesus must have decided to overcome their whole hum. He would do something to act out his teaching. He would show them by example who he was and what his teaching was all about. He who had come from God and was about to return to God would wash their feet. In the breaking of bread, Jesus said, this is my body given for you. Now he quite literally uses his body to show the attitude of humility and service that was part of his mission as the Son of God. As God laid aside the divine glory, 
in the incarnation. So Jesus lays aside his garments to do the work of a slave. He was showing and telling them something about himself that humility was one of the characteristics of God. Funny we never think of God as being humble. Maybe because humility is another one of those words that gets bad press. Humility does not mean being a doormat. It means you have enough confidence in who you are that you can recognize yourself even when you're dirty. It means you can risk the dirt because your appearance does not have to be defined by the cosmetics of pride. God is like that. The God who lived among us in Jesus Christ is like that. Well, while the disciples may still have been thinking about the chief seats in the kingdom, the God who made them was washing their feet. Jesus also sought to show and tell us something about ourselves as well. He tells us that when we participate in his body and blood, we also become the foot washers of the world. The servant is not greater than the master. A new commandment I give you that you love one another. When we present day disciples of Jesus Christ come to eat at this table, it's appropriate to examine ourselves as to whether we are thinking about the chief seats or the opportunities for service. The holy meal itself should be a reminder of our call to serve the needs of the world and our community. In the early church, people did not show up at worship and find the communion elements all prepared in advance and waiting for them. No one had laid out those styrofoam wafers and poured the wine or grape juice into those individual antiseptic shot glasses. They brought their bread and wine with them and they presented it at the time of the offering for theirs was largely a trading commerce where people dealt in kind. So the priest would take enough of the bread and wine to be used for the communion and the rest would be distributed to the poor in the community. Participating in the communion of the body and blood of Christ automatically meant being involved in ministering with Christ to the needs of the world. As Christ gave his body and blood for the world, we're called to give ourselves. As he washed the feet of the disciples, we're called to outdo one another only in serving and showing honor to one another. Jesus has given us, has shown us an example of what we're to be if we follow him in the world. If we are to presume to partake of his body and his blood in this last supper this evening. Do you know what I've done? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Come to the table this evening, confident that God has already made you the kind of person who is ready to receive these symbols of God's love. Come with the resolve to repent and to serve because that is the kind of person God has already made you. And then this meal will be an occasion for deep spiritual enrichment, a true opportunity to wash off the dirt of sin. Friends, you've already washed up. Now come and eat the blessed meal that our Lord has brought to you and me and all his friends.
night he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and remember how much I love you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he poured it and he blessed it and said, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, my blood shed for the remission of your sins. Take and drink. And remember how much I love you. And now I want you to do something a bit different. We've washed our hands so much, it's time to take care of these hands that Jesus expects us to use for other people. Servant hands are important. So I want you to find somewhere in your house some lotion, some lotion, and if you're with family, work the lotion in each other's hands. Each of you share the lotion and touch one another this evening. If you're by yourself, it's okay, many of us are, but rub that lotion into your hands and feel how wonderful that feels much better than Perel, much better than soap and water. And it's a reminder of the day when we'll be able to enjoy God's creation and one another again. A day when this virus is over with and gone. But rub that lotion in and appreciate one another tonight and take care of those hands because those hands are the hands of a servant. And now listen to Mark as he brings our worship to a close.
remember me when they're old enough to teach old enough to preach old enough to leave and age to age and heart to heart bound by grace Pray with me if you would. Now may the grace, peace, joy, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ go with each and every one of us, sustaining us and disturbing us. Amen.